let's get our acceleration here. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2021 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. So, first and foremost, a huge shout out and thank you to the Volkswagen here in Southtown for providing us with the Atlas Cross Sport. Check out their inventory in the link below. Let's just get right into it. Under the hood, we have a Nachi aspirated 3.6 liter V6. It goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 276 horsepower and then 266 pound feet of torque with fuel economy being 16 around town and then 22 on the highway. Now let's go over the front end of the Atlas Cross Sport and this is where it's going to look the most similar to a regular Atlas is just from the front end. Now this one has the platinum gray metallic paint which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. I just think it looks really good on pretty much any Volkswagen to be honest. Like it's just a really good looking color in general. Now you have like the two muscular lines on either side of the hood and that's kind of like a big part of the Atlas design in general. And then you see the massive front grille. It's really imposing, especially in person. And then I love the LED lights. The reason I love them, you can see the accent lights, they connect into the grill. So it's like all one line all across, just a really good look in general. You've got the front camera right there. And then you can see you've got little venting there on the sides, parking sensors along the front as well. But that is everything for the front end. Now around the side here, we've got two 55 millimeter tires on 20 inch wheels in the front and peeping over there in the rear as well. You guys know I love the design. It's kind of like this blade-like design with the wheels because they do the aluminum inserts on it. It just looks really good from an aesthetic standpoint. And then I love the body line here. You can see it kind of like swoops along the car and then goes all the way along the edge. I think it's another really good look right there. And then yes, you've got the cross sport badging there on the side of the cross sports so you know what it looks like now here's the side and this is where you can tell the difference because you can see the rear is sloped down whereas the regular atlas is more squared off this one has a little bit of a slope to it Looking here in the rear of the Atlas Cross Sport, you can see that you actually do get a cover here for the cargo area just to keep everything nice and uh, protected away from uh, thieving eyes. And then we can see you've got the Atlas floor mats here. They are rubber floor mats, which is pretty nice to have. And then you can see you've got like this little cargo carpeting. Now underneath all of this, you can see that you've got the little tire underneath that little portion right there. And other than that, storage space back here is actually pretty good. Now, you guys remember with the regular Atlas, it has the third row in that, so it does get in the way of storage, whereas this, you get more storage, but you don't get the third row. So you win some, you lose some, but overall, it's a really solid storage area, and I love all the little, like, Volkswagen bags. Like, it's just got a lot of stuff happening with it. over the rear end and this is the biggest stylistic distinction between this and a regular atlas and again you guys notice that it kind of like swoops down looks a little bit more sporty compared to a regular atlas hence the uh, cross sport but anyways coming here to the taillights i really like the taillights in general just on all the atlases just look really cool and then you do have a receiver hitch there at the bottom so yes you can tell with it pretty neat and if you guys are wondering yes those are fake the exhaust tips actually out that side it just pops out the bottom but those are just for uh, stylistic purposes coming here to the back looking at the door panel you actually do get a sunshade for the rear passengers here in the cross sport and just like nicely rests right there they do get some padding for their arms here in the rear as well and then you can see one of the speakers for the sound system and then it's actually a decent amount of storage on this door in general and then here are the seats for the rear you can see you've got the stitching throughout and then you've got the perforations on the seats as well really nice just from an aesthetic standpoint and i love the contrast with the white stitching but let's pop in so stepping in do gotta duck my head a little bit if you guys are wondering i'm 5'11 and headroom is actually pretty good and then in terms of legroom i've got plenty of legroom for the rest of my life but you can see we've got a couple of vents right here heated seat controls and then some usbs and then you actually have a 115 volt which you can read the label right there you just got to uh, push that and then yep that's how you access the power outlet finally last thing here We've got some cup holders covered in plastic because, well, it's a new car, so you gotta you gotta keep the cup holders nice. No using those until you buy it. Coming here up to the front, before we get to the door panel, the mirrors are power folding, and when you unlock the car and open it, they'll just fold right out, and when you lock it, they'll fold in. I really like the front door panel, so this trim right here, it's pretty cool just how it's like this giant kind of like triangular-ish box. It looks like a beak, like think of like a pterodactyl 
Yes, I always compare everything to like animals, but it, it's just what I do. Anyways, you've got the padding right here with a bunch of stitching down below. So again, a really nice design detail. And then as we're gonna rest your arm, all of the window controls and the mirror controls, and that's the release for the rear hatch. And then here are the seats at the front. So you can see again, soft to the touch, perforations all throughout the seats. And that's because these are heated and cooled. Bolsters on them are really nice. I like the gray accenting on the seats as well. There's your memory seat function. There's the adjustments on the seat and what they look like. Here's what the pedals look like there at the bottom. And then you can see the light controls right here in this little area. And then you do have the steering wheel adjustment as well. And other than that, there's one more look before we pop in. Here's the steering wheel in the cross sport. So you know, smooth leather all around and then you got black stitching on the inside of the steering wheel itself. And then coming into here, you can see you've got like the voice commands, controls for the center screen as well. And then this is actually for the radio. Over here, the adaptive cruise control functions are right there. And then that, you can see for the lights and then the turn signals, that's just mostly for the brights. And then you got the windshield wiper controls over here. Pretty simple and feel the steering wheel is actually really nice. Now here in the center gauge cluster, you can see that you've got the RPMs on the left side and then it also shows the gear right now in the center and then you've got the speed on the other side and it shows it like twice, right? You've got the regular speedometer and then you also have like the digital readout version of it, which is pretty interesting. And then you can see other stuff, like it shows me range on the car right now, it says I need to fill up with gas. Vehicle information, you got your telephone, audio, navigation, and then that is for the safety technology in the car. So you can see just like most other modern vehicles, it just shows you everything here in the center. I like the look of the center gauge cluster. I think it's a nice clean look. Now the next thing to go over is actually with the drive modes. So notice that it does pop up right there in that little corner right there. So you can see you've got the snow, normal, and then you've got the off-road and then you've got the off-road custom mode as well. So it just gives you a little readout there, and we'll go over the modes though a little bit more in depth a little bit later. Now here in the center screen, let's pop it into reverse so you guys can see the back of camera. Remember, it does have the parking sensors as well. When you turn the steering wheel, the lines will turn with the steering wheel as well, and that blue is actually pretty cool. But you can actually exit out of the back of camera, which is pretty interesting. Most cars, when you're in reverse, it doesn't let you go to the back of camera, but this one does, which I think is actually pretty cool. Now, I did say we're going to get in the drive modes, which we're going to do that again. Pops up here on the screen, so you can see it gives you a cool little graphic there on the screen and with the drive modes when you go through all of the different drive modes. So pretty straightforward with that. I think the functionality on it's easy, and I like the little graphics because it shows it like in the side of the vehicle. I think that's just pretty cool. With the rest of the infotainment system, in terms of usability, on it response time on this is actually really solid and they've got shortcuts on either side of the screen so whatever you want to use you just pop it on this one doesn't have navigation but i don't know it's easy to use and i love like when it does like the screen flip thing with the car it just like pops up it's pretty cool but other than that really good infotainment system really good response time on it as well and thumbs up for me now here is the climate control area is what I'm going to call it because you can see up there at the top you've got all the controls for the heated seats, ventilated seats, and then to direct the climate to an extent and then also like the cabin airflow. And then down here you actually have the dual zone climate controls. Yes, it is a dual zone, so pretty simple on that. And then you got auto stop start in that little area. Now you can see popping out here, this is kind of like your charging station is what I want to call it because you got a couple USBs and a 12 volt and then this is a wireless charger just right there um, on that little area. So you just throw your phone in there. Now in this whole section, you can see we've got a couple of cup holders and then this is the shifter for the eight speed automatic transmission. You can manually shift the gears yourself if you want. Got the engine stop start button. That is the drive mode select. You've got your parking brake and then this is for the parking sensors and then that's a parallel and perpendicular parking assist. And then back to this, this also goes over to like a little camera. So you press it and then it'll give you like a bird's eye view with it. So pretty cool on that, that it's kind of like a dual function with the uh, little button. Now here is the center console, which is massive. And you can see like compared to my arm, it's, it's huge, but opening up it's, I mean, storage space is good. You've got a USB, most center consoles and SUVs are really small. So this is solid. This trim, my camera cannot focus on it for some reason. That's the best I can do for you guys. It's pretty interesting above the glove box, but going into the glove box, you can see it's normal, nothing too crazy there. And then they do actually stitching all across the dash just to make it look a little bit prettier. Now up top here, we actually do get a full panoramic sunroof in the crossbar, which is a nice little option. If you're wondering where the controls are, those are all the controls for the sunroof. So pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy happened up top, but black headliner, 
matches the black bottom part of the car. Now that we're done going over the interior on this Crossport, let's quickly get into the pricing. So this particular Atlas Crossport with all the equipment that it has, stickers for about $50,000 before any type of market adjustment. So if you guys kind of like think that's like in the same price range as like Grand Cherokee, which I think that's really what this like competes against mainly because again, that's like a five seater, bigger size SUV like this. So it makes sense. That all being said, let's take this Crossport out and see how it drives. Let's go over the visibility here in the Atlas Crossport. So you guys can see the visibility over the hood and then there's the visibility through both of the mirrors. Remember it does have blind spot monitoring. And then here's the visibility all throughout the rear. So even though it has that cool slope design, the visibility really isn't impeded at all. So you get the best of both worlds. Anyways, that all being said, well, let's set off. Well, let's get set off in the Atlas Crossport. And I actually really like the look of this. Like I already said that in the video, but I just think it's a really just cool looking SUV in general. It just has this like nice, clean, sleek look. But initially setting off, let's talk about the road noise and the ride quality. So in terms of the road noise that comes through, it's super windy down here. Like every single day, it's super windy. A big reason is because of the interstate, it just like all the cars going, whoa, that truck, hopefully that was captured on camera. That is orange. I love orange. I wonder why. But anyways, <laughs> continuing along, super windy. You don't hear a whole lot that comes through and the road noise just in general is really minimal and it's super smooth as well. Like. I know this road was just paved, but at the same time, it's just, oh my gosh, it's just floating along. Like it's such a nice vehicle. It definitely has that more luxury feel to it from a ride quality perspective. And then also from a sound insulation perspective. And my guess at that is because, um, well, Volkswagen has access to Audi technology. So they get all the good stuff and it's apparent in how this car drives and also the sound quality that comes through. Well, let's get our acceleration here. Yeah, that feels right where it should be. Acceleration is really strong in this. So again, I said this kind of compares to the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And if you guys remember, the Jeep Grand Cherokee has a 3.6 liter V6. And in terms of the power outputs, they're pretty similar to this. So from like an acceleration standpoint, it feels about the same as the Jeep. I know you can get like bigger engines in the Jeep and get the 5.7 Hemi and the 6.4 Hemi and all that. But that's also in a higher price bracket. So that's why we're not comparing that to this today. And from acceleration standpoint though, it's solid. And on the highway to there, it didn't really get loud. It was still really smooth. So as like a vehicle that you could daily drive, really solid on that. And this will actually get me into summing things up with the Atlas Crossport and just where I think this stands overall as a vehicle. So first and foremost, if you're looking for something that just has like a more unique look, this definitely fits within that category, especially from the back end. It reminds me of the Lamborghini Urus, just with the shape of it. And they probably did that on purpose, to be honest. But from an aesthetic standpoint, again, really cool. The technology is great. It has all the modern tech that you want. It has all the safety tech, right? The adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, all that. So solid on every aspect from that standpoint as well. And then just as like an overall package compared to its competitors, it's right where it needs to be with the engine and the transmission and the acceleration, all that kind of stuff. And the tone capacity is solid on it too. So it's just a really good package. And I would say that if you're looking for this type of SUV, so like, again, think like Jeep Grand Cherokee, then I would definitely check one of these out, um, just comparing it to the other options because it definitely stands with itself. There we have it, everyone, the Volkswagen Atlas Crossport. I really like the look of this, especially from the back end, just looks, really really sporty but anyways again a huge shout out and thank you to the southtown volkswagen for providing us with this atlas check out their inventory in the link below i will see all of you in the next video